Uh oh, okay, that's too much. That's okay, isn't it? That's pretty good. What the heck? Oh, that's too much. That's better. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Please stand by. I'm screwing around with the camera. And there we are. Good afternoon, everybody. It's time for Stratomatic Baseball. Oh, yeah, I love this time of the day, I got to tell you. We've got the Los Angeles Dodgers at the Cincinnati Reds today. Don Sutton on the mound for the Dodgers. Milt Pappas will take the mound for the Reds. You can see their cards here in real life. And there is Kenyon. And there's Jeffrey, and there's Franklin. Welcome, guys. Glad to have you on another, frankly, uh, shitty weather, I would say. I mean, it could be worse. It's 54 degrees, so it's not really cold, but overcast and intermittent sprinkles. Just kind of blah, you know what I mean? And there's Mike C. Welcome, Mike. Let's check these pitchers' numbers in the replay so far. That's always fun. Don Sutton, 3-0 on the replay with a 1.83 ERA. And Sutton, as you know, probably my favorite player as a youngster. He's made five games, five stars, two complete games, one of them a shutout. 34 innings, 34 hits allowed, 28 strikeouts. Milt Pappas, 0-1 with a 4.05 ERA in the replay, three starts. 20 innings, 28 hits, but get a load of this. This is my favorite. He's walked one. That's right. Pappas has walked exactly one batter in 20 innings and struck out 11. So right now he leads the league by far in strikeout to walk ratio. That's 11 to 1. It's basically unsustainable. But it's fun. It's a fun stat. Of course, it means very little in Stratomatic, right? I mean, as far as in real baseball, I think strikeout to walk ratio is a phenomenal indicator of a pitcher's future performance. But since in this game, the future performance is already in, built into the card, <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it doesn't mean anything. Oh, I should get to one other thing before we get started. I was looking at my ejection system, which some of you guys know it, some don't, but I'll explain it for those who don't. When a hit by pitch is rolled, if the 20-sided dice is a one, somebody's getting ejected. Now, this was something we did when I was very young, and we just said, okay, the batter charges the mound, he's out, and then we roll the dice. One to ten, the pitcher's also thrown out. 11 to 20, he stays in the game. I never bothered to research the probabilities of this. So for some reason, I got a wild hair yesterday, and I looked at the hit-by-pitches in the 66 season. It's about 680-something. We'll call it 680 just to round it off. So in other words, that will occur 5% of the time the one should come up. So that's 34 times during the year this should happen. So that's not too many. So I revised what happens in the situation. I think this is more fair. I'm going to go with this from now on. I just came up with this yesterday. 20-sided roll of one on a hit by pitch. Then we roll the 20 again. One through seven, the pitcher will be ejected. Eight through 14, the batter will be ejected. 15 through 20, both will be ejected. So I'm going to pin that on my board. I won't do it now because basically I can't find a pin. I was looking around for one. I know I've got pins around here somewhere. If not, I'll walk over to Staples and buy some. You know what I mean? So here's the game. Now I will give you the lineup for the Dodgers, and we'll set the Reds defensively for you. Maury Wills will lead off. This is the same lineup as the last game against the Giants. First of a three-game series, by the way, in Cincinnati. Wes Parker batting second. 
Willie Davis will hit third. Ron Fairley in the cleanup spot. Lou Johnson batting fifth. Jim Lefevre in the sixth spot. John Roseboro catching, batting seventh. Nate Oliver hitting eighth. And Sutton, of course, bats ninth. For the Reds defensively, Johnny Edwards will be catching Pappas. The infield, Tony Perez at first. Pete Rose at second. Leo Cardenas at short. Tommy Helms at third base. You might remember just recently. Hefner switched Rose and Helms. For most of the early part of the season, Rose was playing third base and Helms second. This is actually a better defensive alignment for the Reds, as you can see there in the fielding ratings. The outfield will be Art Shamsky getting the start in left field today. That might be his first start. I'll have to look at that. Pinson in center and Mel Queen in right. And with that, we're about set to get underway. You know, he is, Kenyon. Although the 405 ERA, that's not too far off, is it? 429 ERA. But look at, I mean, the walks, it's not that far off. He, he, Pappas didn't walk anybody. I mean, granted, he walked more than one every 20 innings. <laughs> but he didn't walk many people. So that's, yeah, that's fairly realistic, I would say. And now we're set to go as Maury Wills stands in. Wills comes into the game batting 333 among the league leaders in batting. No homers, three RBIs, but he scored 18 runs. And, of course, again, Wills' job was never to drive in runs. Okay, Franklin. Yeah, don't tell me the weather. I've, actually, I have, a, I have a cousin who lives in Sarasota. I don't know how close you are to Sarasota, but I would imagine the weather is similar. And there's Kevin Hayes. Greetings to Kevin and welcome. Okay, we're set to go here. Papa stares in. The sign from Edwards. Now the windup. Here's the pitch to Morty Wills. That's going to be a 112 right handed. Liner to second. Rose has it. Oh my. He hit it hard. Right at Rose. One down. And that'll bring up Wes Parker. Parker comes into the game at 326, two home runs, nine RBIs. Switch hitter batting left-handed. Here's the pitch from Pappas. That's going to be a 211 right-handed. Another grounder to Rose. He's got it. Flips to Perez and quickly two away. I have to let me reload this. I cannot see for some reason the comments at the very bottom of the chat. There we go. And there's Joel Horland. Welcome. Yeah, 184. 184 and 184. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, well, I can't complain. I'll tell you what, it's about 180 more than I would have expected when I first started doing this. Anyway, what's important is you guys in the chat, especially the regulars. I really do appreciate you guys. You bring a, add a lot to the stream. And that's what's fun. Okay, here's Willie Davis now. Davis hitting 311. No home runs, but 13 RBIs, which would be second on the ball club. And here comes the pitch from Pappas. It's going to be a 610 to the left-hander. Fly to center field X. That will be Pinson. Pinson, a 2E14 in center. Pinson on his horse, ranging back. There's the play on an 11. That's the E rating. That's a 2. Oh, my God. He's a 14. The roll is a 2. This could be trouble. E3, 1 through 2, but the white die is a 4, and he makes an amazing running catch into the left center gap. Oh, my goodness. What a play by Pinson. 8X. That's a web gem. And the Dodgers are retired. Three up, three down. We go to the bottom of the first. Los Angeles, nothing. Cincinnati coming to bat. And as Don Sutton gets loose, we'll give you the Cincinnati lineup. Pete Rose, of course, leading off. Tommy Helms in the two spot. Veda Pinson in his normal number three spot. Tony Perez will play first and bat cleanup today. Johnny Edwards, the catcher, hitting fifth. Leo Cardenas hits sixth. Mel Queen, which here he is. This is a computer-only card printed from my Windows game, of course. This pitcher's card is simply a placeholder. 
Art Shamsky bats eighth, and Pappas hits ninth. So Sutton's ready to work. And there's Rick. I just saw Rick over on uh, Jeffrey's channel. How you doing, Rick? And Kenyon has a question. Is it... You know, that's a good question, Kenyon. I kind of think they're batting over their heads. I'll give you the team stats on these guys. That's always fun to do on these teams. The Dodgers are batting 261 as a team. But they've scored 101 runs, which is third or fourth in the league in offense. That seems high to me. Pitching is second in the league to the Pirates in Team ERA. They're Team ERA at 2.82. I don't remember what the Pirates is, but they're leading in that category. The Reds, on the other hand, are batting 215 as a team and have only scored 60 runs. Their offense has really struggled, and their pitching is near the bottom of the league with a Team ERA of 5.32. So the Dodgers have pitched well. They've also hit over their heads, I think. You've got four regulars batting over 300 so far. Lou Johnson, Wills, Parker, and Willie Davis. The Reds' leading hitter is Rose at 289, by contrast. Well, yes, by the, if you're talking about by the runs scored and runs allowed, what's that, the Pythagorean theorem as written by Bill James back in the early 80s? Yeah, they've earned the record. Now here's Roche now, as I mentioned, hitting 289. He's got two home runs, seven runs batted in, switch hitter batting left, and here's the pitch from Sutton. No, oh, I didn't set the Dodgers defensively. It's Rose Burrow to do the catching. Infield of Parker, Oliver, Wills, and Lefevre. The outfield left to right, Lou Johnson, Willie Davis, and, and Fairley and right. But here's the pitch to Pete Rose. That's going to be a 2-8 grounder to first. Parker, he'll take it to the bag, and there's one down. Yeah, no doubt, Ben. Very high team ERA for Cincinnati. And here's Helms now. Helms batting 227. One homer, seven RBIs. Sutton into the white. Pitch to Helms, a 1-5. It's a base hit up the middle. So Helms, a ground ball single right up the middle and through into center field. And he's aboard with one out. Helms, not a threat to steal. And that'll bring up Veda Pinson. Pinson hitting just 233, two home runs, seven RBIs. And taking his lead is Helms. Sutton to throw over there, Helms back in. Now comes Set from the stretch. Two Pinson on a 2 6. That's a single into right, two stars. Helms will round and head into third. And just like that, the Reds are in business here in the bottom of the first. Runners at the corners, one down. And Tony Perez will be the batter. Right, Franklin. The other thing is, look at the running ratings, especially in contrast to the Reds. Here's Perez now. They're going to be double play depth. Two runners at the corners, one down early in the game. Sutton trying to get out of a jam now in the first inning, working from a stretch. This is Tony Perez, a 5-9, swung on and missed strike three. Oh, my goodness. What a key strikeout that was for Don Sutton. And with two away, the batter will be Johnny Edwards. The left-handed hitting catcher comes in hitting just 194. He does have two home runs and four RBIs. Sutton now from the stretch. Pitch to Edwards is a 4-7. Swung on and missed strike three. Oh, my goodness. So with the runners at the corners and one down, Sutton fans Perez and Edwards. And that will do it for the Reds. No runs. Two hits. Two men left on. 
And we're through one inning of play here in Cincinnati, and we are scoreless. Another scoreless beginning, as I like to say, what else is new, right? This, of course, was uh, Old Crosley Field. Just over 12,000 in the house on a Friday evening. I don't think that park held a whole lot of people, did it? I could be wrong about that one. It was an older park, and so I'm just assuming now, as far as capacity, one of the smaller parks. And we moved to the second, especially in the 60s, Franklin. It was a, it was a cavern in the 60s. They moved the fences in 10 feet or so in the early 70s. And, of course, the mound got lowered in 69. We all know that by now, but yeah. No, I know. You can use that. I'm, I'm not a fan of that. But I use it in the Windows game because I'm in leagues where it's, that's the rules. That's what you use. That's fine, too. Here's Fairly to lead things off. Fairly, I'll, I'll explain that a little bit. When you're building your own teams in a keeper league or whatnot, the park effects really become over-exaggerated because you're building a team yourself and you're building it to fit that ballpark, which makes total sense, of course. That's what you have to do. So here's Fairley batting 250, 17 for 68. One home run, 12 RBIs, left-handed hitter. The pitch from Papp is a 3-6. It's a ground ball to second. It's Rose. Rose has been busy so far. Throws him out, one down. Three of the first four plays hit to Pete Rose at second base. And here's Lou Johnson now. Johnson leading the club in batting at 341. Four home runs. And 23 runs battered in, which I think is definitely among the league leaders. That may even lead the league. Let me take a look here. He's tied for the league lead in RBIs with Bill White of the Phillies. So here's Lou with one down. Exactly, Franklin. Here's the pitch to Lou. It's a 6-7 right-handed. It's a grounder to second base X. And what about that? It's Rose again. 2-E-17 as he ranges to his left. And here's the play on a 12-E rating. It's a 10 on a 17, and he makes the play. Nice play, Rose. 4-3-X, Johnson retired. And here's Lefevre, switch hitter. Comes in hitting 263, two home runs, 10 RBIs. And here's the first for the fever. It's going to be a 5 9 left handed. Fly ball into right, playable for Mel Queen. He's got it. And Pappas sets the side down in order in the second. And so we're still scoreless as we move to the bottom of the inning. Yeah, there you go, Franklin. Yeah, Fenway, you could you would load up with right-handed hitters. And thank you, Rick, for that, and welcome to Gerald. So it held just over 29,000. Yeah, that was that's a small park, at least by today's standards. Leo Cardenas will lead things off for the Reds in the bottom of the second. Cardenas comes in hitting 230. Three home runs, nine RBIs. He's got some pop, especially for a shortstop. Sutton into the windup. He takes the Cardenas, a 6-5 right-handed, and he walks him, ball four. So a leadoff walk to Leo Cardenas. He's got wheels, star 16. Sutton with a poor hold, a plus four. Balanced out a bit by Roseboro's minus three gun behind the plate. Still a plus one would make him a 17. He will be held on making him a 15 as Mel Queen steps to the plate. Cardenas is going to try for that lead. Four through six he needs. To be a 17, he does not get it. To be a 15, rather, right? 16, 17, minus two, 15. Next pitch to Queen. The lefty is a 1-9. Grounder to shortstop. Wills to Oliver to Parker, not in time. That'll be a force. 6-4. And Queen is aboard. Queen, not a threat to run.
McQueen, by the way, I forgot to mention his stats. He hasn't played a whole lot. He's just been in, uh, uh, he's played in only five ball games. He's 0 for 9 with two runs scored. He's walked three times. And of course, if you look at the computer only card, that's all he does on his card is walk. There's not a hit on that card. Quite a few walks. So here's Shamsky, one on, one away. And here it is. It's a 3-6 right-handed grounder to second base. That's going to be Oliver to Wills to Parker, double play. Let's look at that again. 3-6, second base. Queen was not held. Cardenas was. That threw me for a second. But Cardenas was erased on the force. So a 4-6-3 double play retires the side. And we are scoreless after two. And I was trying to glance at the chat, too, which I keep reminding myself I should really only do that every half inning. But it's hard not to. It's hard to read, you know, I should say that for one thing. Where I have the laptop with my eyes, I have to peer over the reading glasses to read this. Yeah, and there's a good relay team, absolutely. Who was the slow one you mentioned yesterday? The, the terrible one. <laughs> or was it the day before? I remember it. We had four slugs, and you pointed out that would be terrible. Four by 100 relay team. Oh, in Joel's league, Sutton's going to go for win 20 tonight in 1975. Against the powerhouse Reds of 75. Oh, God, yeah, they were in full big red machine status by that point. Dodgers batting in the third. We'll see the bottom of the order. Roseboro, Oliver, and Sutton. Roseboro comes in at 170. One home run, seven RBIs, hitting left-handed. Here's the wind-up now, and the pitch from Pappas is going to be a 6-6 six, six left-hander. Swung on and missed strike three. And down goes Roseboro on strikes. For Pappas, his first K of the ball game. And that'll bring up Nate Oliver. Oliver, the light-hitting second baseman. Hitting 246. No home runs. The wind-up on the pitch is a 4-6. Swung on and missed strike three. And Pappas getting serious with the K pitch here in the third. And here's Don Sutton now. Right-handed batter. 3-W. The pitch from Pappas. 4-7 to the righty, and he strikes out the side. Oh, my goodness, how about that? Pappas whiffs the side in the third, and we go to the bottom of the third, still scoreless. And Sutton will get ready to go here in the bottom of the inning. And I should point out that Pappas hasn't walked anyone in this game either. So he now has 23 innings with only one walk. Pretty incredible. And he'll lead off the bottom of the third himself. He's going to bat here. He's a 1R. He does have N power, interestingly enough, which you don't see that very often on a one-hitter's card. Right on right is the pitch from Sutton. It's a 5-6. Struck him out. Not all that surprising for a one-hitting pitcher to strike out. And here's Pete Rose again. Rose 0 for 1 today. Sutton gets the sign from Roseboro now. Here's the pitch to Pete. 3-4 right-handed. Fly ball into left field. He goes the other way with it. Johnson, ranging to his right, pulls it in. And here's Tommy Helms now. Helms singled in the first. Here's the wind-up and the pitch to Helms. That'll be a 4-8 right-handed. Fly ball to right field. Easy fly ball for Fairley. He'll take it. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for Sutton. We've played three here 
in Cincinnati, and it is still scoreless. Another pitcher's duel. Checking the chat now. Oh, wow, Franklin. I did not hear that yet. They're going to go to Sacramento for a few years. Oh, yeah, and Pappas trying to prove himself. Vegas when they get around to building a park. So that's the hang up in Vegas, huh? Is the ballpark. Sacramento might be okay. I'd say anywhere they go is going to be an improvement, wouldn't you? I mean, that, oh my God, that park was a shit pit 25 years ago. I can't even imagine what it looks like now. The one in Oakland, I mean. Top of the order for the Dodgers, and Pappas has been flawless so far. Here's Wills to lead things off, lined to second in the first inning. Pappas to wind up in the pitch to Morey, 5-7. It's a base hit into right field, and Wills is aboard. First hit off of Pappas. Wills with wheels. Pappas with an excellent hold, however, a minus three. Edwards is zero. That would make Wills a 12, not Hill. So they won't even bother to hold him on, saying if you want to go 60%, go for it. And here's Parker now. Parker 0 for 1. Wills taking his lead. Pappas to throw over there. Wills back to the bag. Now comes set. From the stretch, the pitch to West Park. 1-9. That's going to be a grounder to second. But with a plus... Wills Hill, that's a single two stars. Wills will head into third on a base hit by Parker through the hole vacated on the right side. So a lucky break there for Los Angeles. First and third, nobody out, and here's Willie Davis. Parker not a threat to steal. How are the Reds going to play this one now? This is tough. With one out, I'd definitely go for the double play. They probably should anyway. They'll be back looking for the double play. Pappas staring in now from the stretch. The pitch to Willie Davis. It's a two, five, single two stars. Wills will score, and it's one to nothing. RBI single for Davis. Parker into third. And it's the first run of the ball game. RBI Davis. Davis has wheels. He's a star 17. So he'd be a 14 not held. They will hold him on, making him a 12. So that answers the question of infield in or back, since you can't hold a runner on and have the infield in simultaneously. They'll elect to hold Davis on. I'm quite sure he would go at 1 through 14. So they'll make him a 12, and here's Fairley. Runners take their leads. Pappas Lance over to first. Now from the stretch. Pitch to Fairley, a 1-12. Fly ball to right field, B question mark. That will play will be handled by Queen. Parker can tag up on that. Parker a 16-18. Queen a 0. He's tagging. Here it comes. And he scores. Sacrifice fly for Fairley. And it's 2 to nothing. Fairley picks up an RBI. First out of the inning, and here's Lou Johnson. Davis on first, still held on. Pappas from the stretch. Takes to Lou Johnson, a 3-7. Fly to center field, fairly deep. Pinson's there, and makes the catch for the out. And with two away, here's Jim Lefevre. Lefevre flew out to right his first time up. Pappas staring in from the stretch. Takes to Lefevre, a 2-4 right-handed. Fly ball to left. He goes the other way. It's holding up for Shamsky, who makes the catch to retire the side. But two runs on three hits. They leave a man. And we go to the bottom of the fourth. Two to nothing, Los Angeles. Getting back to the chat.
Vegas is actually suggesting they not move there. That's interesting. They're tearing down the Tropicand. They are doing it. So they are doing it in spite of the mayor's objections, huh? That's very interesting. I imagine there's a lot of politics in this, right? Something I try not to get involved in. I guess they'll be where they'll be, and Jeffrey wonders about the name. Yeah, I'm sure they'll stay the A's. They've been the A's in, what, three cities at least already. See, no reason why that would change. And, oh, yes, speed came in. Speed came into play there for sure, Ben. And lacking any real power, that's how they score. They have to manufacture. The Reds, despite their lowly 215 team batting average, actually have more power than the Dodgers. They've hit almost twice as many home runs. And here's Pinson to lead things off now. Pinson singled in the first, standing in from the left side. And here's the pitch from Sutton. It's a 211 right handed grounder. Come backer to Sutton. He knocks it down, now picks it up. Over to Parker, one down. And here's the youngster, Tony Perez. Struck out the first time against Sutton. Sutton gets his sign now. Here's the windup. Here's the pitch to Perez. It's going to be a 3-3 right-handed. Fly ball to left. Johnson backing up a bit and hauls it in. And with two away, Johnny Edwards will be the hitter. Edwards, the left-handed hitting catcher, also fanned in the first. Sutton with the windup. Pitch to Edwards, a 6-4 lefty, catcher's card X. That will be Roseboro, a 1-E-4. Roseboro, an excellent catcher. And here's the play. On a 14, he makes the catch. Pop up to the catcher. 2-X, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Sutton. And we're through four complete here. Dodgers 2, Reds nothing. Abs bingo, Franklin gets the Cadbury egg today. I'm just making that up, obviously, if I was handing out prizes. I think that's the only three, right? Did, you know, Ben, did the mayor say why he's against it? Something to do with gambling, I would imagine. But, I mean, you know, you can go on DraftKings or whatever, any of these sites now, offshore. I, I've had several offshore sports betting accounts when I used to do that. It's not hard to do in the computer age. You can pretty much place a bet from anywhere. I don't do it anymore. <laughs> I got my ass handed to me too many times. I gave it up. And I'm, now that I'm retired, I, I don't have the money, frankly. I can't afford to be pissing away money gambling. Anyway, to the fifth we go. Bottom of the order here. Roseboro, of course, struck out his first time against Pappas back in the third when Pappas fanned the side. Pappas with the windup now. Here's the pitch to John Rose. It's going to be a 2-9 righty. Grounder to first. Perez will take it. Takes it to the bag himself. One away. And that will bring up Nate Oliver, light-hitting second baseman. He also fanned in the third. Pappas to one. Pitch to Oliver. It's a 5-4 right-handed. Grounder to third base X. That will be Helms. Helms a 2-E-16. Ranges to his left. Here's the play. Error range, it's a four on a 16. That's going to be trouble, and he boots it. One base error, Helm. So an E5 allows Oliver to reach. That'll be an error on Cincinnati. Oliver is star 15 stealer, but again, Pappas with that marvelous hold. There'll be no need to hold him. He's a 1 to 12. Sutton a C bunner. He's going to lay it down. It's a five on a C. It's a successful sacrifice bunt for Sutton. 
And Oliver moves into scoring position. So Oliver in scoring position, two down, and here's Maury Wills. Wills one for two. Pappas staring in now, checks his runner. The pitch to Wills, a 1-6, six, single to 13 on a 20. That's stabbed by a diving Rose who gets up and throws him out. Nice play, Pete Rose. And that'll retire the side. No runs, no hits, they leave the man. We go to the bottom of the fifth, still a 2 to nothing ball game. Another fantastic pitcher's duel here in 1966, Stratomatic. Not entirely by coincidence. One of the reasons I picked this season, I was hoping for exactly these kind of games. And I'll tell you, I have not been disappointed so far. Catching up on some of the chat now. The Oakland fans want to keep the team, huh? You know, honestly, my thoughts on that are if the Oakland fans wanted to keep their team so badly, why didn't they support it? And Ben says, probably just too much too quick. It's not like casino facilities that are awash in cash to build it with little other assistance. Is that true? I wouldn't have guessed that either. That stuns me. I assume those places were just rolling in dough. My times have changed. Oh, I get it, Ben. So you're saying they, if they just rebuild a better park in a better part of town, they might get supported in Oakland. That makes sense. Leo Cardenas will lead off the bottom of the fifth here. He walked his first time up and was forced. Sutton to the windup. Now he picks the Cardenas. It's a 6-6 six, six right-handed. Swung on and missed strike three. And down goes Cardenas. That's Sutton. For Sutton, rather, that's his fourth strikeout of the game. And here's Mel Queen now. Queen 0 for 1. Sutton into the one. The pitch to Queen is a 5 8 left handed ground ball to second base. Oliver scoops it up cleanly, flips to Parker, two down. And that'll bring up Art Shamsky. Shamsky hasn't played that much this season. Where the hell is he? Here he is. He's been in 10 games. He's 3 for 15. He does have a home run. I think it was a pinch hit home run if I remember correctly. And here's Sutton's pitch to Shamsky. It's a 4-9 left-handed, and he walks him. So ball four, a two-out walk to Shamsky. And that'll bring up Pappas here in the fifth. He's going to bat, still early. Right-handed hitter, 1-N. From the stretch now, a 2-10. He walks him, ball four. Oh, my God, Sutton, the unforgivable sin of walking the opposing pitcher. Back-to-back -back walks, and the Reds have first and second and two down, and here comes Pete Rose. Rose 0 for 2 today. Sutton staring in now from the stretch. Here's the pitch to Rose. It's a 3-8 right-handed grounder to second. Oliver has it, shovels the short way to Wills, and that will retire the side. So no runs, no hits, two left on. There were two walks. And through five complete, it's Los Angeles two, Cincinnati nothing. Oh, yeah, Jeffrey, you went there, huh? 70. Went to the 20-inning game with Blue and Rudy May. 
1971. How awesome is that? I went in the early 80s. They were playing Baltimore. And at that time, you could walk up to the counter day game and bought a seat right behind first base, basically. It was awesome. I... <laughs> I reached, I felt like I could practically reach out and touch Eddie Murray. I remember Murray stands out for some reason. I don't even remember who was playing first for the home team. I'll tell you something, in 1971, Vita Blue basically cemented my love of baseball. I got into it in the 68 World Series. I'd say I was a casual follower, follower in 69 and 70, and then this Vita Blue comes along, and I'm telling you what, I had never seen anything like it. Oh, nice, and that game is on YouTube. I'm going to have to check that out. Top of the sixth we go. It'll be Parker Davis and Fairley. Let's get the right pitcher up there. Milt Pappas ready to work. Parker one for two today. Pappas the windup. Here's the pitch to Wes Parker. It's a 4-6 left-handed. Single to third team. We're on a 20. That's going to be flagged by Perez. Gets up and shovels to Pappas covering. And there's one out. And here's Willie Davis now. Davis, an RBI single in the fourth. He's one for two. Pappas gets his sign from Edwards. Here's the pitch to Davis. It's going to be a 3-7 base hit up the middle for Willie Davis. And Willie's two for three. Davis, star 17 stealer, 14 not held. He'll be held on. He'll be a 12. And that'll bring up Ron Fairley. Fairley 0 for 1, drove in a run with a sack fly. And we've got a dice down. There it is. <laughs> oh, man. It didn't roll too far under the desk. And from the stretch, the pitch to Fairley. That's a 6-6 six, six left-handed, swung on and missed strike three. And down goes Fairley. For Pappas, his fourth strike out of the afternoon. Two down, and here's Lou Johnson. Johnson 0 for 2. Pappas stares in now from the stretch. To Lou Johnson. It's a 6 7 right handed. Grounder to second base X. Rose again. Rose really being tested down there today. 2 E 17. Here's the play on a 16. He's got it and throws him out. Nice play, Pete Rose. Rose looking good at second base today. No runs a hit, one left. And we go to the bottom of the six. Still two to nothing. Am I a hunch manager or by the numbers? I would say I'm more of a by the numbers. Now, I'm going to ask you to qualify that question, Gerald. Do you mean when I'm playing solitaire in a replay or when I'm playing somebody else in one of my many, many keeper leagues? If I'm playing somebody else, I am 100% by the numbers. No, I shouldn't say 100. 95. I've been taking more hunches lately, actually, even playing somebody else. Throwing to the plate, 1 through 18 on defense, I never used to do that. And Jeffrey, Vita's first half of the season... The best half season ever. You know, I wouldn't argue with that. That was, I could see it like it was yesterday. I'll never forget that.
actually Kenyon, they're not they're not even close to the same stadium dimensions. No, they moved the f they moved the fences in twice since '66. Once in the early '70s, and then when they put those extra seats down in the field, they basically eliminated most of the foul ter territory, which used to help make it a pitcher's park as well. Now it plays fairly neutral, although Stratomatic seems to think it's a home run park. In fact, in their ballpark ratings for 2023, it's easier to hit a home run in Dodger Stadium than it is in Coors Field, which, frankly, I find utterly ridiculous. Just common sense tells us that isn't true. I even wrote him and told him about it. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Not as much as when I was younger, but I'll still do it. Here's Helms. Write your congressman. Well, I write my baseball teams and Stratomatic. I write Stratomatic a lot. There's a lot of weird shit on that 365 live game, I'll tell you that. It's still a lot of fun, though. I'm not knocking it. Just when I see something that I think should be brought to their attention, I do so. Here's Helms now, one for two. Sutton into the one. Here's the pitch to Tommy on a 1-9 right-handed. He's got himself a double on a 12, and that's down for extra bases. Helms rounds and scoots into second with a stand-up double. So a leadoff double by Helms. Sixth inning, Sutton, an S7 as far as endurance goes, if you're wondering. And here's Pinson now. Pinson, one for two. Here's the pitch, a 1-7, a ground ball to second base. Oliver over to Parker, and Helms will advance to third on the throw. So one down, a runner at third. And now the Dodgers will pull the infield in in the sixth. Runner on third, one out for Tony Perez, who's 0 for 2 today. So infield in, Sutton looks at the runner. Now the full windup. Pitch to Perez, a 5-9, swung on and missed strike three. A huge K there with a runner on third and one out. Sutton strikes out Perez, and it'll be up to Johnny Edwards. Edwards is 0 for 2 today. Sutton stares in now. Here's the pitch to Edwards on a 2-6. Ball four, he loses him. Oh, my. A two-out walk to Edwards. Runners at the corners, two down, and it will be up to Leo Cardenas. Cardenas, who has some pop for a shortstop. Struck out and walked so far. Sutton from the stretch now. He pitched to Leo, 6-11 right. It's a base hit into right field, an open single. Helms is going to score. Edwards can go to third, 10-12. He'll hold up. Edwards, very slow, holds up. But Helms comes in to score on the RBI single by Cardenas, and it's a 2-1 to -one ball game. And that'll bring up Mel Queen. Queen, the walk master. What were his stats in real life that year? I'm just curious now. Let's see how much this guy did walk. He had 55 at bats. He hit 127 with a 262 on base average. So he drew 10 walks. He had more walks than he had hits. How many times do you see a guy with it whose on-base percentage is more than double his batting average? Okay, 127, that would be 254, would be twice that, and his on-base was 262. I don't even, somebody figured the odds on that one, but they've got to be long. Here's the pitch now to Queen on a 1-4, and there it is. He draws the walk, and the bases are full. So Sutton, leading 2-1, to one, finds himself in a jam here in the bottom of the sixth. Bases loaded, two down, 
and Art Shamsky coming to the plate. Shamsky has some pop against right-handers especially. He's a lefty. Ron Paranoski gets up in the Dodger pen. Sutton will face Shamsky. And here's the pitch from a full windup. 3-9, struck him out, and the Reds leave the bases full. Two Ks for Sutton in the inning. They do get a run on two hits, but they leave the bases loaded. Huge opportunity squandered there for Cincinnati, and after six complete, Dodgers two, Reds one. Yeah, I agree with you about that, Jeffrey. Finley was cruel for offering Vita so little. Wow, Joel, that is fascinating. There's been a lot of chat. I missed quite a bit of it. Joel's friend's dad was Vita's agent in 72. And I'm sure he got along just swell with Finley, right? <laughs> Finley was a very strange man, in my opinion. He did a lot of weird stuff. I once relayed the story of the 1982 Bill James abstract where he explained Finley's pennant porch in Kansas City. You ought to look that up online. That's a hilarious read. Yeah, he was both. He was cheap and cruel, and he was also just kind of strange all around. He certainly put a big value on saving face, which is one reason he moved Kansas City to Oakland in the first place. He felt he'd embarrassed himself in the city of Kansas City, and the only way to remedy that would be to go to a new town and start over. And Jeffrey, you would know more about that than me. That would, I would say that has to uh, indicate a certain type of a psyche. Two to one, and we go to the seventh, a nail biter here in Cincinnati. Holy cow. It'll be Jim Lefevre to lead it off for the Dodgers. Pappas in S7, his first inning of potential fatigue. As he faces Lefevre, 0 for 2 so far. And here it is. It's a 4-7 to the left-hander. It's a bleed-off single for Lefevre. 4-7, he slaps it into right field, and Jim Lefevre's aboard to lead off the 7th. And now we're going to have some action in the Reds' bullpen. They would certainly like Pappas to get through this inning as he's due to lead off the bottom of the inning. Davidson in the overused pile, not available. I would use him in case of an emergency. They've got a lot of lefties down there. That's probably what they want, though, against the Dodgers, right? Jerry Arrigo gets up, and here is Roseboro. Roseboro 0 for 2 today. Pappas working out of a stretch. The pitch to Roseboro. 5 6 left handed. Swung on and missed strike three, and down goes Roseboro. And for Pappas, that's his fifth, I want to say. Yep, fifth strikeout for Pappas. And that'll bring up Nate Oliver. Nate's 0 for 2. From the stretch now, pitch to Oliver, a 5-3 right-handed. Grounded to the pitcher X, Pappas a 3-E-7. Good fielding pitcher. Here's the roll on the play. On a 13 error rating, it's a 7 on a 7. That's going to be a ground ball double play. Pappas fires down to Rose to Perez. Double play. So a beauty by Pappas. And that retires the side. So Pappas indeed does make it through the seventh. And now he'll give way to a pinch hitter as we move to the bottom of the eighth. K 
catching up on the chat once more. Groove wondering, give Queen credit. He was a better pitcher than a hitter, absolutely. And there you go, Jeffrey. Yeah, thank you for that. I knew it was one of those things, something like that, right? It had to be something. Who said that? That was uh, Saturday Night Live, right? Well, it's always something. Gildner Radner's character. So Pappas will give way to a pinch hitter with the Reds trailing by a run in the bottom of the seventh. Pappas worked seven innings. He only allowed five hits, struck out five, two runs, and of course, as usual, he did not walk a batter. So now he has 27 innings with only one walk. How about that? Wills, Parker, and Davis. Billy McCool is going to join Arrigo in the Cincinnati pen. And that will be chosen on the basis of what they do here in the bottom of this inning. And we need a pinch hitter for Pappas. Tommy Harper was in the game in real life. That's good enough for me. We're going to go with Tommy Harper. Tommy Harper, outfielder, pinch hit in this game in real life. Harper's a good card, but he's not doing well in the replay so far. He's just 6 for 59. Can you believe it? Harper a 3-7 right between two, a walk and a single. He flies to center, and that's going to be Willie Davis making the catch. Let me look at that again. 3-7, fly to center. Harper's retired. And that'll bring up Pete Rose. Paranoski down in the pen, remember. He's ready. Sutton the pitch to Rose. 2-3, right-handed. It's a tapper down to third. Lefevre to Parker. Two down. And here comes Tommy Helms. Two for three today. A single and a double. And here's the pitch from Sutton. It's a 1-6. And there's a base hit up the middle. And Tommy Helms is three for four. So a nice game for Helms. Helms, of course, many years later involved in that big trade, him and Lee May going to Houston for Joe Morgan, which is the piece that basically cemented the big red machine. And here's Pinson, one on, two down. Pinson, one for three today. Sutton from a stretch. Four, seven to the lefty. Swung on and missed strike three. And down goes Pinson, down go the Reds. No runs a hit, one left. And we're through seven in a two to one ball game. Holy cow, it's another great ball game. And again, the strat gods are with me as far as close games go. Trailing. <sighs> Trailing, they're going to go to Arrigo. Now the question is what to do with Sutton. He's pitched seven. Remember, he's a rookie. He's a 20-year-old rookie this year. I'm pondering this one. I'm going to leave him in. He's only given up five hits. Mm. 
Left-hander Arrigo ready to go. Sutton, a right-handed hitting pitcher. The pitch a 2-8. He struck him out. Not that surprising. Sutton struck out twice today, and here's Maury Wills. He'll turn around and bat right-handed against Arrigo. Cherry gets the sign from Edwards. The pitch to Wills, a 3-6 left-handed. It's a base hit into center field, and Wills is aboard. And now this is a dilemma. Arrigo does not have Pappas's hold. He's a plus two, which would make Wills a 17 not held. He'll have to be held, making him a 15 as Wes Parker comes to bat. Switch hitter batting righty. Two through 10, 12. He's out on 11. He's trying for the lead. He's got the lead. One through 15. There's the throw. He's out. Oh, my God, what a throw by Edwards. Wills caught stealing. For Wills caught stealing for the third time this season, he's stolen eight. And Wills gunned down on the base paths, two away. And here's the next pitch to Parker. Two ten lefty, swung on and missed strike three. A nice inning by Arrigo. So Los Angeles retired in the eighth. Put who in left for the glove, Franklin? Sutton's going to pitch the eighth. Perez, Edwards, and Cardenas do. Tony Perez, the youngster, 0 for 3, struck out twice so far against Sutton. Oh, sure, could have done that. Taking Shamsky out. That would have made sense. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed that. I got to remember to look up more often, especially in the half inning. Sutton ready to work now. The wind up hits to Perez, two, five, struck him out. And that's what, three, four, five, six, seven strikeouts for Don Sutton now. And here's Johnny Edwards. Edwards 0 for 2 with a walk. Left-handed hitter. Here's the one that's on the pitch. It's a 5-6. Swung on and missed. Strike 3. That's three strikeouts in a row for Don Sutton. And that'll bring up Leo Cardenas. Leo is 1 for 2 with a walk today. Drove in the Reds' only run with a single in the sixth. And here's the wind-up on the pitch to Cardenas. It's a 1-5. Struck him out, and Sutton strikes out the side. Holy cow. Four in a row. And through eight complete. A 2-1 to one nail biter. Queen would be due to lead off. We'll hit for Queen, but right now with a 2-E4 and right, he's going to stay out there. Lefty, lefty, righty. So Arrigo will start the inning at least. They're going to get a right-hander up, though. Jack Balshan throwing in the Cincinnati pin. All hands on deck for the ninth. And Willie Davis will lead it off. He's two for three today. Both singles drove in a run in the fourth. Left on left now. Arrigo set and here's the pitch. It's a 1-4. Tapper to short. Cardenas has it smoothly over to Perez. And there's one down. And that'll bring up Fairley. Ron Fairley 0 for 2. Sack fly in the fourth. Arrigo the left-hander into the windup. The pitch to Fairley. 5-8 left-handed, grounder to second base, X just rose again. Man, how many X plays has he had today? A 2-E-17. Behind the bag, here's the play on a 17. He's got it. Nice play. Throws him out. 
two down. 4-3-X, another nice play by Pete Rose. Two down, nobody on. And here's Lou Johnson now. Right switch. Nobody on. He'll face him. The next batter is a switch hitter. Here's the first to Johnson. It's a 3-8 left-handed. And he hits him on a 1. And here we go. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. It's the ejection chart. Ready? On a 16, Johnson charges the mound. It's a melee. Both benches empty. Holy crap, what is going on here? All hell's breaking loose in Cincinnati. Johnson hit by the pitch, charged the mound. Listen to this crowd. It's bedlam here in Cincinnati. And now the home plate umpire... Bill Williams has thrown Johnson out of the game, and he has thrown Erigo out of the game. Yes, Ben, it's the double thumb. So the Reds will need another pitcher. They already had Balshin warming up, so he'll be coming in. Jack Balshin, many remember, he was actually a key piece to the Frank Robinson Milt Pappas deal. I did not know that. I learned that this year. The, the Reds GM coveted Balshin for several years. And without Balshin, that deal would have never gone down. So Balshin will come in. Johnson ejected. We'll need a pinch runner for him and an outfielder. Let's see what we got here. Nobody can really run. Pretty much going to have to be Tommy Davis. So Tommy Davis will run. No speed, per se. Ejected. Ejected. <laughs> How about that? I just made that chart last night. And wouldn't you know it, it comes into play today. So everything's settling down now. Tommy Davis will come in and run for the ejected Lou Johnson. Jack Balshin, he'll get as much time as he needs to warm up. After Arrigo is tossed from the game, he ends up going one and two thirds. One hit, no run so far. No walks. Of course, he hit a batter and he struck out one. So here's Balshin, runner on first, two away, and Jim Lefevre coming to bat. Everybody getting settled down now. Tempers running a little high in Cincinnati at the moment. So Balshin, what's he done on the replay? Let's take a look. He's been in... Where is he? He's been in five games. He's 0-1 with a 19.29 ERA in two and a thirds inning. I can assure you the card's better than that, although it's pretty bad against lefties. And that's who he's facing, a lefty, Lefevre. Lefevre, one for three. Balshin staring in from the stretch. The pitch to Jimmy, 6-6. Six, six. Single two stars. And Davis will take third.
And now it's a dilemma for the Reds. In my mind, they can only do one of two things here if I'm the Reds. You've got Roseboro up, Nate Oliver on deck. They can either walk Roseboro, which I really hate walking people intentionally first and third. That moves the base runner for free. Or they can bring in their other left-hander, Billy McCool, and that's what I'm going to do. There's no way Balshan's facing Roseboro. There's too much on the line here. So while the bedlam occurred after the hit by pitch and all the ejections, McCool started warming in the pen. Balshan came in because he was ready. But he gives up a single to Lefevre, and that's all that Hefner's going to stand for. And he's going to go to their ace, McCool, right here against the lefty Roseboro. And I wrote, I wrote Roseboro here in the Reds pitching line. Oh, good grief. My apologies. What am I doing there? Obviously, Roseboro is not pitching to himself. So it'll be McCool. McCool's been the ace. He's got two saves, no record, a three earned run average across six innings of work. Two on, two down. His job is to get out Roseboro. He's 0 for 3 today, struck out twice. McCool gets the sign from Edwards. Here's the pitch on a 2-4, a tapper to short. Cardenas, easy play, flips the short way to Rose, and that will do it. So a lot of action in that inning, but no runs. Two left on, one hit. There was a hit batter. There was an on-field melee. Two players were ejected. <laughs> and we go to the bottom of the ninth. It's Pinch hitter for Queen, Shamsky Pappas. It's vulture time. So Sutton, the rookie, did a fine job for eight innings. With all the insanity that's happened, Walt Alston would prefer to have a more experienced arm on the mound at this juncture. So Sutton leaves having struck out the last four batters to face him. Only allowed five hits and a run. He walked four, a little wild in the walk department. Holy crap, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten strikeouts for the rookie. How about that? And here comes Phil Regan. Regan leads the team in saves with three. Two wins, a 309 ERA across 11 and two thirds innings. Oh, hell, Ben, let me tell you, I've actually, I've brought in the pitcher from the wrong team to pitch to his own team before, so don't feel bad. It happens to all of us, let me assure you. And the Reds will send up a pinch hitter for Queen. They need somebody who can get on base. Pavletic, the righty, a good on base. And so does Simpson. Pavletic, though, also has some power. He's also the last catcher. Another dilemma. In that case... Actually, the move is Gordy Coleman. There's your pinch hitter. 
Coleman, the first baseman against right-handed pitching for the most part, although Perez started against a right-hander today. That's kind of interesting. It was a platoon at first. I'm not sure they even called it a platoon in 1966. I guess they did, but the complex platooning, as far as my recollection goes, was pretty much made popular by Earl Weaver, right? So here's Gordy Coleman. Coleman on the season, just six for 36. He has one home run. Regan staring in now. Pick to Coleman on a 6-5. Pops him up left side. Will's there. And there's one down. And the batter will be Shamsky. This could work out for Cincinnati, honestly, because Shamsky has serious power against righties. If I had double-switched him for Harper, the pitcher would be up right now. Instead, Shamsky's up. Darren Johnson grabs a bat. Looks like he'll pinch hit for the pitcher. So here's Shamsky. 0 for 2 with a walk. Regan staring in. Here's the pitch to Shamsky. It's a 6-6 six, six lefty. Grounder to second. Oliver to Parker. And the Reds are down to their last out. With a pitcher due up, here comes DJ. Darren Johnson will bat here with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. So we'll write him in. Let's take a look at Johnson's numbers. He's hitting 276 on the season with four home runs and 10 RBIs. Both of those numbers lead the ball club. And yet he didn't start today. So if they're looking for lightning in a bottle, they've got the right guy at the plate. Regan staring in. Two outs in the ninth. Two to one Los Angeles. Darren Johnson at the plate. And here's the pitch. And it is a 1-5. Swung on and missed strike three. Just missed it. Holy crap. And that's the ball game. Oh, my goodness. What a game. What a freaking ball game. Holy forking shirt balls. <laughs> so Regan with the save, his four Sutton picks up the win, moves to four and O. Oh. Pap is the hard luck loser, drops to O oh and two. Balshin faced only one batter, allowed a single. McCool got his only man. And two to one is the final. Thank you very much, Kenyon, Mike, Franklin, Rick, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Hit that like button on your way out. That helps out the channel. I'll get the totals for you here in a minute. Chief Spokane Gary player of the game. I'm at a loss for that one. Is Joel still here? He's good at this. You could go Sutton. You could go Willie Davis. Could even go Regan for the save, for that matter. Totals are the Dodgers two runs, seven hits, no errors. For the Reds, one run, five hits, one error. Did their error contribute to the scoring at all? No, there was the error in the fifth. Ten Ks. Yeah, I'll agree with that. I'm trying to be impartial, honestly. Ben and Rick is my first. My first thought was to give it to Sutton, but I, you know, he's a favorite of mine, so I didn't want to 
I figured I'd at least open it up for debate, right? So Sutton's your chief Spokane Gary player of the game. Eight innings, five hits and a run, 10 Ks. So the 20 year old rookie off to quite the start here in this season. And I'll be back with you guys tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. We're going to have... I might even be back with you this evening. I'll have to see how it goes. I'm pretty pumped up. I could play another one. Next game on the schedule is Atlanta Braves at Houston Astros. That'll be Denny LeMaster for the Braves. Barry Lapman for the Astros. But Lapman's among the league ERA leaders at the, at the moment. And that's it from Forbes, where the Dodgers nip the Reds 2-1. to one. Thank you for joining me, everybody. I sure do appreciate it. A great bunch of guys. Thank you so much. Have a great evening, and I'll either see you this evening or Sunday with the Braves at the Astros. There will be no Saturday game. So Spokane Steve wishing you all a great weekend. Have a pleasant evening. And a fantastic weekend. Thanks, guys. Take care.